In this video, we're going to introduce the buyout number and then think about three examples where the buyout number is of use to us. The first will be thinking about the buyout number in resistance networks. The second, thinking about the buyout number in analyzing fins. And finally, what the buyout number means with regards to solving unsteady heat transfer problems. The buyout number is simply the resistance to conduction heat transfer divided by the resistance to convection heat transfer. If we think about a planar system, then of course that conduction resistance is the length over which the conduction is occurring divided by the conductivity of the material and the cross-sectional area through which the conduction is occurring. The convection resistance from the surface is simply 1 over the convection coefficient times the surface area through which the convection process is occurring. If I divide those two, I will see that the buyout number can be defined as HL over K. And the meaning is, of course, the resistance to conduction over the resistance to convection. If the buyout number is small, then the conduction resistance is small compared to the convection resistance. And conversely, if it's large, then the conduction resistance is large compared to the convection resistance. Perhaps of more interest is if the buyout number is very small, then the conduction resistance is negligible compared to the convection resistance. And that can make our heat transfer calculations significantly more simple. Let's think about this in a resistance network. Let's take the example of heat transfer through a pipe wall. We have a heated fluid inside of a pipe and we're losing heat to the environment at a temperature T infinity 2 with a convection coefficient. This can be described by two resistances, R1 the conduction resistance through the pipe wall and a convection resistance from the surface of the pipe uh, to the ambient. Given these parameters here, I can of course evaluate these conduction resistances. Now here I've done this correctly using the resistance definition for cylindrical coordinates because our area is increasing from R1 to R2 and these are the correct values. Having done that we can see that it's just over 13 kilowatts uh, per unit length of this pipe that is being lost under these particular circumstances. And we can see that in this example the conduction resistance is very small compared to the convection resistance. If I take that ratio course, that is what we mean by the buyout number, I see it at 0 0.01. And so if I reevaluate my calculation, neglecting R1 entirely, let's pretend it's 0 since it's so much smaller than R2, then I would see that I get 13.2 kilowatts per meter of pipe. And that difference is only 1%, so it's very reasonable to engineering accuracy. And of course, it's no surprise if you think about the math that that 1% is, of course, what we see in this ratio of the conduction resistance to the convection. Now you might be wondering why we've used this ratio of conduction to convection when the definition of the buyout number was HL over K. And of course when we use non-dimensional numbers in engineering we're using them to get a feel for the problem. We're using them to do an order of magnitude analysis. It's all right if it's a little bit approximate. Now if I evaluate the buyout number from its definition that came from thinking about planar systems, I want the convection coefficient times the distance through which the conduction is occurring, R2 minus R1 over the conductivity of the material, and I would see that that's a 0 0.05. Well, that's an approximation of this real ratio of the conduction to convection because I haven't used the, the cylindrical resistances in the definition of the buyout number. Now, that's okay because in either case, I'm going to look at this buyout number and say, yes, it's quite small, the conduction resistance is far less significant than the convection resistance, and if I carry out my analysis neglecting R1, I will be off by something on the order of single digit percentages, which is probably fine for engineering accuracy. Thinking about fins, the buyout number is useful there as well. In a fin, we want to remove heat from a heated surface. We do that by increasing the surface area by extending the material out of there. We do that with some geometry. In this case, I have a length, w, a length L, and I have a cross-sectional area that's rectangular with a width and a height. To do the analysis, I'm going to look at a control volume somewhere inside there that has a dimension along the direction of the fin, of the fin dx, and I have conduction coming in at this face in the negative x direction from my volume, and I have conduction going out at the face that is in the positive x direction. The difference between what comes in and what goes between what comes in and what goes out is, of course, the amount of heat that is convected away from the surface to the ambient around the fin. Now, how does the buyout number come in? The buyout number, being the resistance to conduction over the resistance to convection, or HL over K, can be evaluated for this problem 
uh, by thinking about what this length scale should be. And a good way to calculate this length scale in a problem like this and many others is to think about the volume of our control volume relative to the surface area of our control volume. That volume is the cross-sectional area of my fin times the dimension of my control volume dx, and the surface area is the perimeter p of my cross-section multiplied by dx, and so that length scale is suitably calculated as the cross-sectional area over the perimeter. Now, if I calculate this and the biot number is small, it means that this conduction resistance going from, say, the center of my volume out to the surface where the convection process is happening is very small. That means I'll see very little temperature drop between the center and the surface, which means that I can calculate my convection loss from the surface using the same temperature as I'm using for my conduction analysis, which means that I can do a one-dimensional analysis to this problem. I only need to concern myself with how the temperature varies with length along this fin, not the second dimension and how it changes between the center and the surface. That greatly simplifies my analysis, making it one-dimensional. Now in unsteady problems, let's consider that we have a hot loaf of bread just coming out of the oven, and we want to consider how long it takes for that bread to cool down. Where does the biot number fit in here? Well, within our bread, we have a temperature distribution potentially, and the convection process from the surface, which is where, where the heat is actually leaving the bread, is occurring between the surface temperature of the bread and the ambient temperature T infinity 2. If, however, the biot number is very small, the resistance to conduction is very small compared to the resistance to convection, then the variation within the bread itself is going to be very small because these resistors are very much smaller than this resistor. And that means that we can think only about a single temperature for the bread. It means, again, our problem is a one-dimensional problem because we can think only about how the one single temperature that represents the entire temperature of the temperature everywhere within the bread is varying with time instead of having to solve that distribution as a function of time. So it returns our unsteady problem into a one-dimensional problem and greatly simplifies how we can solve how long it takes before we can touch our bread with our bare hands.